I think well, it was in 1963. Um, I was watching television and there was President John Kennedy talking about America landing on the moon and putting a man on that so-called planet. And um, at that point, it just did not seem possible because here we were, Nigerians who had not even seen people fly to then talk about going on to another planet. And um, he said it was going to be done. They got it done in 1969, and I was really, truly inspired by that. It actually said to me that anything that you set your mind on, you could get done. And that most times, what you call foolish ideas are actually the ideas that change the world. And we all know what um, the whole issue of man going into space has done for technology and has done in advancing you know, the course of human development. So every time people tell you that something really is a foolish idea, think deeply. There's actually a gem in that idea and it actually might be the idea that will change things for good. So let's always celebrate foolish ideas. Well, everything around inside always comes across as foolish. So most times what we start off with is always to ask, what can we do better and how can we do it better? So if you ask me about um, something you did that truly sounded foolish at the time, but then has turned out to be that's proven everybody right, is the fact that we took on a brand that at that particular time was totally unknown to everybody, um, both in terms of form as well as a product. And by this I'm talking about Indoor. At the time, the idea was, I mean, the request was for us to come up with a campaign to sell off, I mean, some given stuff, and it was not to build a brand. Um, but then working with that client and trying to, um, working with the client actively, we were able to show that we could actually build a brand out of the product. And um, over a three-year period, it was initially difficult. And from time to time, the question was always, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Are you sure that you're doing the right thing? Especially when a major competitor that had also come in, and a multinational at that time, came in and after about two years, pulled out. You know, so because they pulled out, it was more like the pressure was now on to say, this is not going to work. Nigerians are not going to change to eating something the like of noodle. But we know now some 20 something years after that that's actually not, not true and that the power of belief and also the power of great ideas has now built a multi-billion naira industry and a massive brand in Indonesia. So again, I repeat, when someone tells you that's a foolish idea, you know, think through it. You actually might be onto something real great. Well, when you talk about foolishness of faith, a lot of people in 1979, late 79, thought, one, that we were foolish to be following some young man who had an even more foolish idea to go set up an agency, you know, um, and an agency that would actually, that had as a stated objective, taking on the big boys in the industry and changing the industry. Not a few of our colleagues at that time, as well as people we knew, thought that it was just something that was not going to work. One was the fact that we had no money. Two was the fact that there were no clients. Three was the fact that they felt that most of us were not experienced enough because the only person that had the experience was the guy who was leaving the business. And it was felt like he was actually leaving something for nothing. And that all we could give to him actually was actually to drive, was to drive, was to drag him down. So the faith was more in him. And secondly, the faith was in the idea and the fact that it could be done. And um, when you talk about that idea, it actually was at that particular point something that was a bit out of the world. Firstly, you have to understand that there was some massive 
agencies at that point that controlled the industry. So for you to come um, out of a smaller agency and then now have the stated objective of becoming number one within a given period of time and we stated that it will be within 10 years and we achieve that. And also to now say that you are going to change the industry and move it from being um, just basically agencies that took briefs from clients to an agency that will actually be developing products and ideas and services that will now change the course of the businesses of your clients. Didn't sound possible. I mean, the whole idea was like, how would you do that? But the whole question was, how would you do that? But again, 40 years down the line, I think the, the, the foolishness of that belief and the faith um, has been proven right. And I think that what I can say is that you can expect a lot more foolishness, you know, but, um, and, and you soon start seeing a lot more foolish things being done, being done. Because, you know, we are inside and we will always be foolish to people, but then we will always prove them wrong because we prove ourselves right. When people say to you, you're foolish, think there might be something great out there. Yeah, I, I don't need to tell you that uh, things are changing and changing so rapidly today. Um, the, the impact of technology on just about every aspect of business means that your computer can come from anywhere. So any organization or business that wants to be successful going forward must always think about three things. Number one, how am I going to outstrip myself? And how am I going to outdo myself? Number two, which speaks to the issue of innovation, is that that organization needs to become extremely agile. And to be agile, it also needs to be extremely adaptive. So when you think about insights today and where insight is headed, one thing I can tell you is that we're going to do a lot more to actually not only change ourselves, but to also change how things are done in the industry. Um, it's already on, and uh, indeed you know that, it's already on. But it also means that we have to become a lot faster in doing these things as we speak.